Okay, we're back in the shop here. I'm gonna get ready to spray the final top coat. But I wanted to show you one thing here. Uh, I just basically had just replaced this cellophane uh, plastic here. But I wanted to show you as far as how little this stuff has settled. Um, you know, there's just a little bit here on the bottom, but other than that, it seems to stay in suspension very well, which is probably a good thing. Um, Cause not a lot of us small shops actually have an agitator, especially for a gallon can. Um, five gallon cans would be more common, but I don't own any of those either. So this is actually a really encouraging thing. The fact that it doesn't really uh, follow the solution very well. On a solvent borne system, within probably an hour or so, you'll start to see separation. But here on this waterborne, um, it's not near as prevalent. So I just thought I'd show that with you. And as far as the odor, it's a very low odor again, um, mostly because it's just a waterborne coating, but there still are some co-solvents in here, so keep in mind that there is some hazardous materials in here, but it's at a very low volume. So I'm just gonna cover this back up, because again, this is an evaporative finish, works off of evaporation, so uh, it's important to keep it covered up uh, during use or when you're not using it. So this will slow that process down. So I don't really have a preferred media that works really well with Waterborne, at least I didn't have one with the Chem Aqua. Uh, so basically I'm gonna try the 3M uh, fine sponge again. This is equivalent to about a 280, 320. And then I get these uh, sanding sponges occasionally from a, uh, another supplier. Um, I don't remember what it's called but anyways. These are pretty reasonable, they're about 50 cents a piece. Uh, they work really well for the vinyl sealer I use for profiles and everything, but they don't cut as well in other materials. So my goals are is to hopefully use this for the flats and then use this for the profiles. actually chalks up really well. Just gonna try this sponge here. Actually this sponge doesn't work too bad either. One of the most important thing that a lot of people overlook is softening the corners. Now I don't mean like putting a big rounder on, but basically I'm talking about just taking the corner off. That does two things. Number one is it promotes adhesion to the corners because the square corner doesn't basically hold any film because there's nothing there for it to stick to. And number two is in the sanding process with the softened corners, you're less likely to burn through the finish and hit the stain or take off the stain, creating what we call a white line. So that's another kind of important thing here. And usually what I would do is just take a piece of, of the sponge here and just lightly hit the corner just to make sure that it's being sanded. Doesn't take much. And you don't want to be too aggressive with either, otherwise, like I said, you will burn through it. But the key to making that work is making sure that you do the same thing in the whitewood sanding process. Just basically, I take a piece of sandpaper, whatever my finishing grid is, and I just go over and I rub across it a couple times just to take the sharp corner off. All right, I'm gonna do the door and drawer front the same way, and then we'll get set up to spray the final top coat. Here's something I just wanted to show you real quickly here. Um, I saw this yesterday when I went and sprayed this. It almost looks to be that this might have blushed. Um, I'm not really sure what could have happened here. Um, or in the fact, this, this is a pretty rough piece of plywood. It's actually um, a filler that goes in to fill the back of the drawer front. So when you put the knob on, there's some cushion there between the drawer box and the drawer front. So it doesn't really matter, but this is a little bit concerning making sure that this doesn't actually happen um, on the actual shown surfaces.
One of the spots that I'm knowing probably more grain rays than ever is this inside profile, which I don't normally sand. I really rely off the machine surface, which is usually really smooth. But there's a couple spots here where there's some, um, looks to be some change in grain direction or some burl of some sort that uh, has a little bit of roughness to it, but it's definitely not bad. So we're gonna let this dry and I'm gonna come back and uh, we will spray the front of the uh, door and drawer front uh, once I'm ready to flip them over. So it'll be at least an hour, maybe hour and a half. All right.
right, as I mentioned in the last review of the Sherwin Williams Chem Aqua Plus, um, this one here will also um, have a little bit of a milky look, but don't get discouraged by it. This one doesn't carry as much of a milky cast as the Chem Aqua Plus, but then again, it's a little bit different formulation um, just based on how one manufacturer formulates versus another. So this one again here will also have a little bit of a milky hue, but from what I see, it's not quite as milky as the Chem Aqua Plus. So this color is a little bit pale looking overall. Um, I'm not sure what somebody would like in this color, but somebody might actually like that pale look. I personally don't prefer it, but it's just something that was sent to me to try. So I'm uh, giving it a shot, and that's what this whole video is about, is the entire review of the Valspar Zenith Waterborne finishes. I have seen in here periodically I've got some little bubbles that pop up um, I'm not sure where they're coming from I do have a, a clean compressed air source but it could be debris um, it could actually be air bubbles so I saw the same thing on the back side of the door and I can't say they really felt them so maybe they did pop in time but I'm just gonna walk away from this because this is basically an as-is review So I have the material out of the system. I've salvaged everything. So what I want to do now is, first of all, going to move that. Here is nothing more than a cup of just plain old tap water. And I'm just going to put the insert, stick the pickup tube inside. And have another empty cup here and I'm just going to purge back into this. Now this material depending on your location um, it could be regulated and may not be regulated by the government as far as local EPA things like that. In my case here it is regulated so it's regulated basically as waterborne paint waste. They treat it the same thing as latex paint. Um, for my license it's actually just as cheap to get rid of if not a little bit cheaper than solvent but what I'm going to do is run just clear water through the pump and then I'll actually run some more water through it because right now I've got a little bit of uh, residue on there from the pickup tube. I could have actually um, wiped the tube off but you got to remember there's actually material inside the tube yet just the residue so I'm just going to purge that out now. thing I want to do here is take a clean paper towel 
and I just want to wipe the pickup tube, wipe it down all nice, get all the stuff off of it. And because this is stainless steel, nothing really sticks to it, which is a nice thing. And then the other thing I'll do too is I'll take off this tube and make, and right here you can see a little bit of residue. Just clean that up a little bit. Basically, what I've found so far with all the the two waterborne coatings I've tried is that once you hit it with water, it just basically rinses right off. So it's literally um, like cleaning up spilled milk when it's wet. When it's dry, it's a little different story. Okay. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna do a closing comment of the parts when they're finished. That'll be the closing review. But right now, as far as the spraying aspect, um, we're pretty much done here. So, all right. But overall, um, <clears throat> if I wasn't going by feel and I was going by looks, the Valspar Zenith series, the Zenith Waterborne Finish series, um, definitely is quite appealing. Um, you know, the stain colors I mentioned earlier, it's very uniform. I wish that my solvent-based stains were this uniform without having to do extra work, but I didn't do anything extra to this to make it look like this. I just basically had sanded it the way I normally did and put the stain on, wiped it off, let it dry, and put a seal coat over it. So it's very uniform, it's nice looking, but like I said, it just doesn't have the hand that the original sample has. So. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the Valspar Xena series. I'm pretty sure that what I'm seeing here is something that happened here. So um, I'm going to revisit this probably um, after I get a little bit of inf info. I don't know if I'll do a video on it or not, but I'll for sure maybe post a comment or maybe do a follow-up video as far as the discovery on this. Because I have seen this before and I, for the life of me, I just can't remember what, it, what causes it. But <clears throat> overall, um, if this is truly what the coating was supposed to be, and this is, um, or this is how sensitive it is. Am I ready for waterborne if this was my choice? My qu the answer would be no. Um, this is a simple reason that I couldn't sell this to anybody. I mean, it, it, to, the, to, the average, um, to the average eye, if you didn't look at really close at it, you would say, hey, you know what? It feels smooth, it's not rough, it's not full of dirt, it feels good. You know, I like it, but when you have something that's really slick and especially like this original sample I did with it that has this nice hand to it and the customer sees this, but they got this, I think there'd be a little bit of concern. So um, as far as am I ready for the Waterborne Zenith Finish Series, not yet. I, I need to find out what this co comes from, what could cause it so I can be pro more proactive with it in the future. So I'm going to find out what could have happened here and then I'll probably do like a follow-up video, just more of a commentary to explain what could cause this. I do have one other Valspar finish that I would like to try. It's the Valspar, um, just waterborne lacquer from Zenith or the Zenith waterborne lacquer and then some more wipe stain to go with that and see if that does anything different than this here. So. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys would like to leave comments down below as far as um, you know your um, experience with the Valspar Zenith series, what you found works, what doesn't work, what you run into, things like that, it'd be really helpful, because um, if I want to pursue this any further, um, it'll give me an idea as far as um, what to look for for those of you guys who have come across it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Questions and positive comments are welcome. Thanks for watching.